Watching the SEC on ESPN. And tonight in Gainesville, the Gators at 5 and 1 welcome undefeated Florida State to town. As the fifth ranked Gators look to bounce back from their lone loss of the season against Duke. Welcome courtside, everybody. Tom Hart alongside my buddy Sean Farnham. We know a lot about Florida right now. We don't know that much about Florida State. So this is a real test for the Seminoles. Yeah, their strength of schedule overall really hasn't allowed anybody in the nation to appreciate the hot start that they've had to the season. The thing I love about Florida State has been their getting back to the junkyard defense mentality. They are defending extremely well, in particular at the three-point line, holding opponents to 31% shooting from beyond the arc. That's going to be tested today because the Florida Gators are one of the best three-point shooting teams in all of college basketball. The series began in 1951, and Florida State has never won four in a row. They have a chance to do that tonight after taking the last three from their rivals. And we are underway in Gainesville. Florida State in the road black. Gators in the home white. And Florida controls the tip. Here's their do-everything point guard, Chris Chioza. Gators are shooting 46% from deep. This is a high-octane offense. They lead the nation in scoring. Allen off the mark. Came on Allen with a little floater. And here comes Florida State the other way. Seminoles wasting no time, and it is across the end line and will stick with Florida State. It's a Florida State offense which knows how to get up and down the floor as well. 89 points a game for Leonard Hamilton's squad. A lot of that, though, is coming off of transition. They want to create pace, and they want to speed up the game. They do that through their defense, which allows them to play quicker at the offensive end. Once they get in the half court, though, Tom, they're comfortable running their motion offense. Look for their bigs to come out, set on-ball screens, and then dive to the rim. Terrence Mann gives it up. Shot clock down into single digits. The point guard, Walker for three. C.J. Walker with just his ninth three of the season, and the Seminoles jump out front. They're coming off a career-high 24 points versus Rutgers. He had two threes in that game against the Scarlet Knights. ACC dominated that challenge and a foul inside on Ike Obiagu. It's his first, not much depth inside for Florida State and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Talking with him today, he pointed out this is a young team. Even my guys who've been around haven't played a whole lot of minutes, so they're still getting to know each other. Hamilton in his 16th season as the head man of Tallahassee is still getting to know his team. Well, and he, like he said, he goes, I'm really comfortable with where my team is at right now. I know we're not a finished product. I know we have a lot of young parts or players that haven't been in the program but maybe two years, and their roles have completely changed coming into this season. So with that understanding, he plays 10 guys every single game. You're going to see this come in wave after wave of players, sub after sub, uh, and it's going to come very frequently for the Seminoles. And already early, if you're under Kevin Gelly, enters to replace Ike Obiagu, so already a change inside. Remember, they're without Chris Kumaje, the big seven foot four center, who's still out with an injury. Jalen Hudson hits one of two. CJ Walker, the sophomore point guard from Indianapolis, played about 13 minutes a game last year. Onus is on him to run the offense this season. Angola off balance on a challenge shot, and then a foul inside, and that'll be on the floor in the first against the Gators. It's going to be on Kulichov. First on Igor Kulichov. The transfer from Rice has made a big impact here. I mean, you look at reloading from last season. Kenyon Berry played a big role as a transfer. A couple of transfers this year paying early dividends. Angola for three, and he knocks it down. A couple of triples from Florida State early. Well, a couple of slips, too, led to that one. Two Gators collided, slipped on the floor. Nobody there on the closeout. That is a wide open, uncontested shot. And as much as you can talk about Florida State and maybe some of their inconsistencies from three, it's one of the things Leonard Hamilton anticipates will improve throughout the course of this non conference. Hudson, the Virginia Tech transfer, has it rejected. Chioza with a corner shovel pass and a step on the end line and a Florida turnover as Kayvon Allen stepped on the sideline. Where is Florida State best in the half court? Well, they're, they're best when they, I think, they utilize their bigs and they elevate their bigs. And what I mean by that is they get in their motion set, they can set some ball screen actions to try, try to create a mismatch and a seam to drive. 
But this is a very unselfish basketball team, one that shares the ball very well, averaging almost 19 assists per contest. Turning down a good one, finding a better shot. They haven't made a two yet, but they've made a couple of threes, and that trend continues. It'll stay with Florida State. Seminoles getting another up close look. Phil Kofer rattles one home with a jump hook. What a great start for Florida State to come on the road and be able to execute the way they are. And right now, they're beating Florida to the punch every single possession. A poke from behind. Here's Terrence Mann all alone and the flush. And Florida State is off and running on the Gators already. It's a 10 to 1 lead for the Seminoles. Gators having a hard time figuring it out on the offensive end. Came on Allen for three. We'll solve that issue. Well, you know what? You drive and you dribble penetrate like Chioza did, and he's so good at finding shooters, knowing where his teammates are going to be. Good relocation that time by Allen. Gopher for three. Trying to stretch the D and came on Allen with the rebound. Now Chioza, so dangerous, one of the fastest in basketball, gives it up to Hayes, and that's an offensive foul by Kivarius Hayes. I blame that offensive foul charge on the point guard. Know who you're passing the ball to. You put him in a no-win situation there. Hayes is a very athletic and skilled player, but he's driving in at full speed with a rotation over on the back line of the defense that's set up and ready to absorb that contact. C.J. Walker gives it up. Good ball movement. Walker for three. And we welcome you to Exact Tech Arena in Gainesville, Florida. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. A rivalry game here early in the season. Undefeated 6-0 Florida State. 5-1 Florida. And the Seminoles got off to a red-hot start in this one. They led 10-1 before the Gators got a three their last time down. A little bit of sloppy play early for the Gators, the nation's leading scoring team, and 99 and a half points a game. And we've got an early timeout. Florida State getting some easy looks thanks to their D. Well, it's all about the defense. The junkyard dog mentality. They've been talking about it, bringing it back to the Seminoles. It's been working early. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by eBay. Fill your cart with color. Exact Tech Arena in Gainesville, Florida. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham and this uh, Gator pregame ceremony a lot more electric than their offense was early on. The Gators off to a slow start, just one for four from the floor. They've been led by Chris Chioza. We know him as the heart and soul of this Florida team. Sean, somehow he's improved his all-around game this season. Yeah, Chris Chioza has been outstanding. And you talk about how electric this offense is, the leading scoring team in the country. A lot of it comes from Chris Chioza. There's nobody like him in the college game. Do you hear me? There's nobody like him in the college game, which means there's nobody averaging better than 13 points per game, better than five and a half rebounds per game, better than six and a half assists per game. And oh, by the way, also shooting the three better than 55 percent it's actually at 59 percent for him on the season so if you're looking to get this offense going and certainly they've gotten off to a sluggish start it starts with number 11 and Chioza had a great look on a cutting Keith Stone on the baseline out of bounds but Florida turns it over sloppy play that's their fourth turnover of the game and they're just 25 percent from the floor well think about this four turnovers already in the game they only average nine turnovers per contest even at the pace that they play it it's one of the things that coach white told us earlier today at shoot around that he's most pleased about their ability to limit turnovers Florida State getting it done on the glass five offensive rebounds that led to eight points and now a Seminoles turnover uh, points in the paint, points off of turnovers, and second chance points all on the side of Florida State in this game. Offensively, it's been a struggle for Mike White, who's done a tremendous job 
in his first couple of years here at Florida. SEC Coach of the Year. He's already got his uh, name among the elites. Guys like Calipari, Tubby Smith, and Eddie Sutton, the only ones to have won more in their first two years in the SEC than Mike White. Here's Stone for three. And Keith Stone trying to get it going. Well, Keith Stone has the ability to step out. Look, this is a shorthanded Florida Gators team. We get enamored by the offensive numbers, Tom, and we love what we see, but they don't have any interior presence. But without John Igbunu, who's going to be out probably until mid to late January, at least that's the timetable they're hoping for right now, this is a very undersized, small ball team for the Florida Gators. Freshman Isaiah Stokes would be another option for size inside. He's coming off of an ACL injury, may be ready, or they may redshirt him. Another turnover for Florida. Here's C.J. Walker leading the break, and he rolls it home. Florida State out to a 12-7 lead. Yeah, you see how their defense so quickly, you turn the ball over against them, in particular live ball turnovers, and it's going to relate at the other end into points. A little bit of pressure on Chioza. He took a shot to the face, and they're going to stop play. And take a look at Chioza. He got a 10 second call. Chris Chioza got popped in the face before he hit the timeline. Stopped to look back towards an official. And yeah, that's adding insult to injury, right? I mean, you get whistled for a 10 second violation. But you play the whistle. Yeah, I understand getting hit in the face, but if you don't feel like it's gone your way, like you can't really sit there and turn around in particular in that location on the floor and take a 10 second call. This is a real anomaly for Florida early this season. You mentioned the turnover uh, situation. They've been so great, especially for a team that plays at the tempo that they do. So far tonight, 11 possessions and six turnovers for the Gators. And that's exactly what Florida State wants to do at the defensive end of the floor. Right now, it's the Seminoles that are dictating every aspect of this game. Skip pass on a nice save. Off balance, little floater, no, and tracked down in the corner by the point guard, Walker. Terrence Mann for three. Seminoles hit each of their first two three-point attempts. They've missed their last few. On the run, Ballard can't hit it. And a foul on the rebound will go against Florida State and Trent Forrest. I know Florida wants to play fast. I know they can really shoot the ball from the outside. But I didn't like that last possession. It was an off-balance three-point attempt, one pass in. Now, they get the, fall, the foul away from the ball, so they get to maintain possession of it. But sometimes when things aren't clicking early in the game offensively, turn it down, force the defense to have to guard, and find a better quality shot when your team is more balanced on the floor. But this is kind of how Florida has gotten to 99 and a half points a game, right? I mean, uh, the no, there's no doubt. I mean, look, I was there in Portland. I, I, I watched the Gonzaga game, which to me is the equivalency of last year's Kentucky, North Carolina game where Malik Monk had his big out coming out party of 47 points. And everybody fell in love and said, man, that's the best college basketball game of the non-conference. Florida and Gonzaga was that game for this year's non-conference. I know we got a lot of other good games coming up, but to me, that was the one. That was 111 to 105, a double overtime win for Florida against the Zags. Skaters have already had four 100-point games this season. That's already tied for third most in school history in a single season. The school record is five. Seems like they could get there with ease as Phil Kofer returns to the floor for Florida State. And Terrence Mann will get a breather. Very balanced Florida State offense through six games. They've been led in scoring by six different players. Well, that speaks to the depth of this team. The, the Rutgers game the last time out for the, for, for the Seminoles, they wore down Rutgers. Rutgers played really good defense early and then got tired because of the depth of Florida State. They may not have a first-team All-ACC player on their roster this year. Terrence Mann certainly is capable of it. But to me... It's about the strength in numbers, not the individual for the Seminoles this year. MJ Walker will go to the free throw line. Averaging eight points a game. There's a lot of promise to this freshman out of Jonesboro, Georgia. And Coach Leonard Hamilton loves what the former McDonald's All-American is doing. And he says, look, he, he has freshman games. He, he has great games, and then he has slippage. And that's okay because his approach every single day, his work ethic, his unselfishness, and his buy-in factor to what they're trying to do and what they're trying to create at FSU is all in for this one. He's one of only two freshmen on the Jerry West watch list for the shooting guard of the year. 
Two for two from the line. Another sub coming in. Ike Obiagu returns. And Kevin Gelly will take a seat. So the pressure has been very good for them. Watch how they see it drop off the ball. A lot of times they'll come and trap. But Chioza, they're just trying to slow down the pace and slow down the Gators' ability to get up the court quickly and break down the ball with dribble penetration. Kulichov, the transfer for three. Rojak Gak with the rebound, and Florida can reset. A lot of times in that Gonzaga game, the Gators were just meet, beating the Zags down the floor. Yep. Just out racing them. New Hampshire did a pretty good job of slowing them down and staying attached to shooters, and so far, that's what you've seen out of Florida State. DeAndre Ballard for three. That's off the mark. In that New Hampshire game, Chris Chioza picked up some early foul trouble. It goes to show just how valuable he is to this team. Ten of Florida State's 14 points have come via the second chance. And that's an offensive foul on the screen. To Zanny ESPN, we'll have the 23rd annual Jimmy V Classic from Madison Square Garden. Our first game pitched number four, Villanova. 12th ranked Gonzaga at 7 Eastern. Then old Big East rival square off as Syracuse takes on UConn. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. Certainly Syracuse and UConn, a lot of memorable games inside Madison Square Garden. None more so than that six overtime contest. But I'm really excited for the first game you mentioned there. Villanova a legitimate national championship contender against the Gonzaga Bulldog team that I think is playing its way into that kind of Final Four-esque feel once again this season. They got a guard in Josh Perkins that has really played well, that being back to the lead guard with Nigel williams Goscon, and then Jonathan Williams. You don't need to tell Florida Gator fans how good he can be. He had a monster game against the Gators in that double overtime win. He went for 39 and 12. Biggs have had big nights against the Gators early this season. Here's Allen, transition. Great help defense out to Hudson. And Jalen Hudson, the Virginia Tech transfer, can't knock it down. Florida thus far two of eight from deep. The good news from the Florida perspective is you gave up those 10 quick points, but since then you've been pretty solid at the defensive end of the floor. Challenging shots inside, loose ball. And Kulachov lost it, no whistle, and he will plead his case to no avail. Kind of feels like a rivalry right now, doesn't it? I love this. College basketball to me, and I keep saying this every single game, but it seems every single game we're doing, there's a lot of energy and a lot of passion to it. I think that should have been a foul underneath on Walker. It wasn't called, and instead it's deflected and goes the other way. But you look around the landscape, we've got Big Ten games already starting. Yep. You've got a rivalry game here tonight. You've got Villanova Gonzaga, Syracuse UConn tomorrow. Friday night from the State Bowl Center, you've got Oklahoma and Trey Young. And if you haven't seen Trey Young, he is a can't miss player. He's appointment watching right now in college basketball for Long Kruger and Oklahoma against a very good USC team that has lost its last two games and are looking to get its feet back underneath them. Seminoles start at four of eight. They're just one for their last 12. Gators trying to run. Pull up jumper. In transition is short. Ballard follows up his own miss. I love that. Ballard knew he missed the shot. And as soon as he let it go, Tom and his feet hit the ground. He knew where that rebound was coming and got there quicker. That's going to be a foul against the Gators. Yep, that's an easy call. It's a second on Gorjak Dak. Well, look, you try to manufacture offense. Sometimes you got to be aggressive. Play the miss. Make sure you track it down and finish. The Gators sputtering at the start here offensively. What a fantastic uh, week of college basketball continues. It's already been an incredible season. By the way, Florida State hasn't trailed thus far tonight. It's a 14-11 lead for the Seminoles. They got off to a 10-1 lead against the Gators. The offense for Florida State has really been magnificent when you consider the three pros that they lost off of last year's team. This was a team last year that Leonard Hamilton didn't have to worry much about when it came to offensive production, at least, well, for their last game of the season, that loss in the tournament. However, Bacon, Isaac, Rattan Mays, those were guys that were all, could all get it done at the end of the shot clock. There's no question, when you lose this kind of talent, you can understand why 
even Leonard Hamilton said, look, I understand why the national pundits aren't buying into our team yet because we, our schedule really hasn't allowed us to have that game that everybody's paying attention to. Well, tonight is that game for the Seminoles, and right now they are plus eight in field goal attempts over the Gators in this game. They're the field goal percentage for Florida State, they're shooting 24% from the floor, and they have a three-point lead. They've missed their last eight after a hot start. Savoy was surprised he was wide open. Rebound brought down by Kulachov, the Rice graduate transfer. Somehow Mike White finds impact transfers who are coming out for their graduate season, just like Canyon Barry last year, who you mentioned before. The difference is Kulachov is starting. Barry, for the most part, was a spark off the bench. But similar threats from deep. There's Kulachov into the paint, little floater. So you gotta be able, hit it at the end of the shot be able to make that shot. I mean, good job with the shot fake, the drive to the teeth of the defense. Seminoles have gone ice cold. Another board for Kulichov. Jalen Hudson for three, and he's fouled on the triple. Three free throws coming for Hudson. Wednesday on ESPN, Steph, KD, and the Dubs will be at the high to take on Kemba and the Hornets at 8 Eastern. Then Carl Anthony Towns and the T-Wolves are at Staples to battle the Clippers. Our coverage tips with the NBA countdown at 7, also streaming live on the ESPN app. The Clippers right now, interesting team when you're thinking about the NBA from where they were at the beginning of last year and the expectations, and obviously Chris Paul leaves his departure. J.J. Redick is gone. Jamal Crawford is gone. They got up to a great start at the beginning of this year. And then things have completely fallen off. And in particular now, there's rumors that maybe DeAndre Jordan's going to get traded. And it's going to be a fire sale for the Clippers to see if they can play their way in to a top pick in this upcoming NBA draft. So what do we call that? Who are we tanking for? Tanking for Bagley? Everybody. Bagging for Bagley. No question. They're taking another look at this one. Chuck Jones wants to see if this was indeed a three. There's no question. That's a quick look. Go ahead. Say three. Let's play. Come on. Yep. Jalen Hudson's feet well behind the line at the attempt. It's where you take off from, not from where you land. And they want to double check and make sure the foul is on P.J. Savoy. It would be his first and the fourth on Florida State. That would be a good time to ask Sean Farnham what he thinks about replay and what it does to the rhythm of the game. Uh, well, this, the of the I don't understand. I, I have no idea. Good song reference. <laughs> uh, but I, I have no idea what's taking so long here. If they're looking to see who the foul is on and where the feet were, they, we've shown it to you three times. It's a quick look. Yep, it was five. Yep, okay. And <laughs> Hudson's going to go ahead and uh, it's no problem. We're good. Let's go. Florida State, on the other end, hasn't scored in the last three minutes and 12 seconds. They've missed their last 10 field goals. Maybe this disruption will allow them to get their offense back on track. Is it FSU's offense or Florida's defense that has slowed them down? I'm still trying to figure out what they're talking about. I know. About. I'm trying to get you off topic. I, Let's move back why? to the game. Hudson's good. Okay, look <laughs> at the Virginia Tech numbers. You know how relevant those numbers are right now? They're irrelevant. <laughs> different system, different place, different style of play. Grumpy. Hudson took a year off. He's Grumpy good. Sean is my second favorite Sean. Okay, Happy Sean is your yeah, favorite? Happy Sean's got the lead. Okay, I'm just, I mean, seriously. Uh, was it a three? Yeah, it was a three. I mean, they got to, what, what are they, like, what are we talking about here? I don't know. Clock? I mean, are they looking at their clock? You know, say clock. Know, say clock. something. Something to make this worth Maybe my while. they're all trying to figure out why the Silver Dome didn't go down when they had tons of explosives. Yeah, why didn't that happen? I have no idea. You just don't build them like they used to. That was a good building. Here's what they've determined. Same thing we told you three minutes ago. Now, Sean will get a sermon from Doug Sermons. Well, here's why they discussed it a little bit longer. Flagrant one on Fiondo Cavangeli. So Florida will have the ball on the baseline. Let's take another look at 25. Right, well, then that makes sense. One. Now yeah. I understood why they took so much time. Yeah, take it all back, Grumpy Sean. Yeah. Watch 25 under the basket in the left block. There's a hip check, and that's the flagrant one. Wait, that was it? 
Now Grumpy Sean returns. <laughs> Fiondu Cavagelli, a flagrant one. Okay, look, you can call that as a foul off ball. Sure. That's he's going in the box out. There had to be something more there. Five team fouls now in Florida I mean, State. Here's the close look. You tell me, Tom. Do you think this is flagrant? I mean, that's a flagrant one. Uh. Well, three free throws coming for Jalen Hudson. Two fouls. Grumpy on that Sean play. is here to stay right now. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 Tom, you've seen a lot of football games. There's been a lot of hard hits that you've covered over the course of this college football season. Welcome to college basketball. Now, you've done a lot of basketball games. Have you ever seen that called a flagrant one? No, but I will say this. The style that we now have in college basketball is more entertaining than it has been in years from an offensive standpoint. It, that call notwithstanding, the, the, the point that they've made to open up the game has had a dramatic effect. Oh, the, I love the it. The style is I'm fantastic now. Great. It's, it's a lot better. That had nothing to do with style. <laughs> I know. That had to do with literally two guys running into each other to try to box out. Yeah, there were some extra curriculums, curriculums down there, but, but it's not it, like it's not like that was like, you know, no. brutally tackling somebody out on the floor. Here's Kivarius Hayes, a junior from Live Oak, Florida, with a couple of free throws. He misses the second. That wouldn't have even traded paint in the parking lot here if you would have run up on a curb, for example, in your rent a car. So the possession stays with Florida. They've made it a one-point game now. There's some missed opportunities at the free throw line. Chioza almost turned it over on the inbounds, and then he gets bumped by Walker, and C.J. Walker commits his first. I've seen more contact under mistletoe this season. Really? It's kind of early for that, Tom. <laughs> well, decorations are up in the heart household. Are you one of those that do it before Thanksgiving, or do you <laughs> no. at least wait till well, you Thanksgiving? Got, you have to wait. In my household, you have to wait until December 1 okay. before it's legal. Off the inbounds, beautiful look, and a screen for Allen, who was free. Hayes inside, and it uses all sides of the rim before it goes. Yeah, Fl Florida State has gone ice cold, as good as their defense has been. You know with a team as talented as the Gators are at that end of the floor that you can only hold them down for so long. First lead of the night for Florida. Kofor spun on the baseline. They get him for an offensive foul. Catches the ball underneath, a little rip through. What happened was you saw that off arm, Tom. Okay. Kind of pushed off just ever so slightly. And when you extend out that forearm against the defensive player's body, immediately that's going to get called. Gators on an 8 0 run. Here we go, Here we go. They trail 10 to 1. Came on Allen. Nothing doing. Offensive foul. Against Jalen Hudson, it's his first. They talk about toughness for Florida State. That's the second charge that they have taken in the first 11 minutes of this game. Good job rotating over defensively, being willing to absorb the contact. We pointed out all the offense that they lost from last year. Three pros, two in the NBA, one in the G League. And those guys were all great scores. It seems like this Florida State team, some of these guys are better set and built to play that kind of defense that Leonard Hamilton appreciates. Well, I think the, the clear thing of this, we always say, you know, you use the 76ers line, right? And trust the process, right? Okay. What, what's the process? When we use the word process in sports, in particular with basketball, what you're talking about is the system. What's the makeup of your coach? When you recruit, you ideally want to find players that fit that system and embrace the system in which you are playing. Leonard Hamilton has always been, when he's had his best teams, they've been his best defensive teams. Offense flowing from the defense, the motion offense has always been good for his teams, but it has always started the defensive end. This team and the buy-in factor at that end of the floor gives it the ability to have a very successful season this year. So at the end of the year, will that be this Florida State team's identity? It think? should be. If they're going to have success in the ACC, it's going to have to be their defense. Because they're, like I mentioned, you don't really have a top flight, first team, all ACC offensive weapon on the Florida State Seminoles team right now. But the way the conference looks and the talent in the conference, 
but defensively you could have a lot of first and second team all defensive players and if you see that you know the Seminoles have had a good year. Chioza penetrates kicks shot clock at six great trap in the corner and they turn it over again CJ Walker with the steal three on two little dump off and a finish on the run by Trent Forrest Florida State back in front by a deuce and, and perfect timing defense live ball turnover transitioning into free flowing offense scoring against the team without allowing them to set up into their defense. Here's Chioza again gets cut off. Kulichov off balance still goes. 49% from deep this season and Igor Kulichov born in Russia raised in Israel making his home here in Florida with that three. You realize Tom not a single player on the Florida Gators roster has ever beaten Florida State. The recent history has all trended on the side of the Seminoles three straight years that they've been able to win this rivalry game. This series first began in 1951 Gators lead it overall by plus 18 and that foul was on Javarius Hayes. One of the things I love about man's game is what you saw right there the ability to elevate his initial defender whether it's a shot fake a little head fake and then drive. He's a very smart and experienced player that reads the defense as well draws contact and gets to the free throw line. MJ Walker returns to the floor CJ Walker will take a seat for Florida State. You see Mike White's team is really only going to go about seven guys tonight. They, a couple guys will get minutes here and there spot minutes. But the main bulk of their players are going to go seven. What you see from Leonard Hamilton is consistent substitution which means his guys are fresh and should be ready to go. Keith Stone off the mark one or two from deep thus far for Florida. Gators have made just three of eleven from behind the arc. I'm talking with Leonard Hamilton today he said that's going to be our secret success success in the league if I try to match my top seven with a lot of other top sevens we may not have success but if I can go 11 deep I'll take my 11 over their 11. Man's got seven. And again you have to understand defensively man is not a shooter he is a slasher and a driver. And there he goes. Whoa, look at this finish Terrence man above the rim and it came off of a steal Sean Farnham. Defense to offense. It's a simple philosophy. Florida State has disrupted the Gators in a massive way in this game so far. Ten turnovers so far here in the first half for a Florida Gators team that averages just nine per game on the year. When you turn them over, you attack. And that's what the Seminoles have done. Well, it doesn't take long for Florida State to get it going. They're on a 7 0 run over the last 51 seconds. That was a high percentage look for Terrence Mann, and they've hit four out of the last four. It's now a six point lead for Florida State. Welcome back, Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. We said early in this game, Florida State hasn't had a test yet. This is a real uh, barometer setting game for them tonight. It really is. I mean, you look at Florida State's schedule, and even Leonard Hamilton will tell you that, you know, the reason why at an undefeated, they're one of the four undefeated teams in the ACC that people haven't given them enough credit maybe nationally is because they haven't had that challenge game. This is what he saw as the challenge game for his team to go on the road in a true road environment against a rival who is ranked in the top five nationally and has one of the most explosive offenses in the country. And what we've seen so far is it's been about the defense of Florida State. They're holding the Gators Tom to 33 percent shooting from the floor. Normally they shoot 49 percent. They're holding him to just 27 percent from beyond the arc. The Gators have been shooting 46 percent from beyond the arc this year. And maybe most importantly is they have a plus six in points off of turnovers forcing 11 in the first half so far. Florida finished their game against Duke cold from behind the arc and a cold start here. There were four for the last 18 from deep including that second half against Duke. Long range jumper goes for Terrence Mann. It's now a nine nothing Florida State run. They started the game four for eight. Then Florida State went one for 15. They made now five in a row. They are as streaky as it gets both ways. And Terrence Mann has the last six points. Last nine points now. The last six I really remember. <laughs> the first three not so much. Chioza with the left. <laughs> 
Forrest finds Angola, quick trigger, taking something from the Gators playbook. And it's ripped down by Jandre Ballard. Quick three. That's their game. And a foul on the floor underneath will go against Florida State and MJ Walker. A fantastic freshman for the Seminoles. Florida's coming off of a three-point loss to Duke. They led by 17 in the second half before coughing that lead up. They're up 10 with four to go. That was an unbelievable game to be at. It had a regional final feel for it. You know, if it would have been a Final Four feel if it was in a football stadium. Yeah. Uh, but it, it certainly had that regional final feel in Portland. Mike Krzyzewski said afterwards, that's as good a team as we will play. That's saying something. Marvin Bagley went for 30 and 15 in that one. He's just a fresh Gulachov. Has another free throw coming. He had 34 points in the opener. That tied a 55-year-old Florida school record. He was top five in Conference USA last year at Rice in both points and rebounds. An All-around threat, and he's got seven to lead the Gators. Well, one of the things that Mike White talked about at practice today was making sure that they're tagging all the bigs coming off of screens. And that time, a little too aggressive in the tag from the help, and it drew the eye of the official and the foul against Stone. Stone's first eighth team foul. Florida State not great from the free throw line, just 62%. And Phil Kofer, the senior from Fayetteville, Georgia, to the free throw line. You know, Kofer, he had ankle surgery last season, kind of slowed him down, never got him back on track. This year, he's back to being much more explosive around the rim. And in particular, the last couple of games, he's been on fire, Tom. Averaging over 18 points per contest, shooting 74% from the floor during that stretch. He's 23 of 31. Sounds pretty good. Originally signed with Conzo Martin at Tennessee. And when Martin left for Cal, most of that recruiting class left as well. Conzo now with Missouri. The Tigers off to a good start. Well, I love what they're doing defensively, though. They're running and faking the double. They're stunting the double team on Chioza to try to get the ball out of his hands. Michael Caru nails his first attempt. And Florida has made it a three-point game with six to go in the first half. Walker, nope, and the Gators lose it out of bounds. Pardon me, that was Forrest on the drive. Tuesday on ESPN, we'll have the 23rd annual Jimmy V Classic for Madison Square Garden. First game, number four, Villanova, 12th Wake and Zag at 7 Eastern. And the Big East rivals square off. It'll be Syracuse and UConn at the Garden. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. The Big East off to another great start this season. Seton Hall, how about their win over Louisville in Louisville? Off balance shot done going another foul and another whistle. Let's get some free throws here. Desi Rodriguez had 29 in that game on 12 of 18 shooting. For Kevin Willard's squad, former Louisville assistant. Kevin Gelly commits his second personal. And Xavier got a big rivalry victory over Cincinnati. A little bit of emotion in that game, huh? Yeah. You don't usually see coaches chipping on the sideline to players. Yeah. But that rivalry has certainly had its moments, some very memorable moments. Uh, and these games are important to these coaches. I mean, you, you don't think for one second that Chris Chioza knows in the back of his mind that he has the potential to be the only player ever in Florida Gator history to graduate without beating Florida State. He knows. Leonard Hamilton knows, too. He was the one that was talking to us about it. Right. I mean, this is this is a great game. I love these type of matchups between regional rivals, even though they're in different conferences. And it's been a pretty good start to the college basketball season for the Sunshine State, huh? Jim Laranega's team is off to a great start, too. That cut was there, but then Florida closed the gap. Forrest looking for something. Yeah. 
Six will be left on the shot clock. Gators touch that one when they're out of bounds. You mentioned the rivalry dominated by Florida State this season in all sports. Florida took a volleyball 3 0 thanks to the fantastic Mary Wise, who's been to seven Final Fours, 14 time SEC Coach of the Year. Meanwhile, Gators trying to even it up on the hardwood. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham, Florida, fifth ranked team in the country, has made it a one point game. It was a 10 to 1 lead for Florida State to start this game. It's kind of back and forth. Streaky game for Florida State. Trying to stay undefeated. They're 6 and 0. Meanwhile, the Gators coming off of their first loss of the season. Kofor on the lob went into his own guy, man. And double pumped his way into a miss, and that one is spiked. Speaking of volleyball, Keith Stone caught it at the top. Deep three, MJ Walker, no. And rebounded by Forrest. And he'll get a trip to the free throw line after he got Michael Caru, the freshman, up in the air. Well, Florida has struggled this year with teams with size and certainly multiple opportunities on this possession. Good defense by Stone on the turnaround recovery and then the spike back out, but too many opportunities. Second and third chances for Florida State and then they get draw the foul contact and get to the free throw line. Trent Forrest is from Chipley, Florida. Knocks the first one down. It's a Florida State team that has been missing key components for a good chunk of this season for a variety of reasons. Forrest was out with a bone spur for a little while. They had Angola out to start the season thanks to concussion. They haven't been full strength. And for a team and a coach that wants to go 11 deep, chemistry has been surprisingly good, but they could still improve on that. Well, chemistry takes time. And to me, you look at the, where Florida State is now, and you close your eyes and envision what this team could look like in a month if they continue to buy into the process. I mean, you're talking about one of the elite defensive teams in all of the country making life difficult for a lot of teams in the ACC. Corner three, MJ Walker gets it. Uh, see, if they get, can get the three-point shot down consistently, and MJ Walker is a very good shooter percentage-wise, but get his attempts up and maintain that percentage, Florida State offensively is going to start to take it to another level. Gilles is trying to work on C.J. Walker inside, nothing doing there. Savoy is the other one that can be a really good shooter, but has struggled at times. Kulichov has nine. Kulichov playing a very smart game, understanding they're trying to run him off the three-point line. Take what the defense will give you. Walker threads the defense, finds Terrence Mann. Kofor kept it alive, but Okaru will come out of there with it. Ballard doesn't waste much time, does he? Quick trigger. He's got a half dozen, and Florida's right back in this one. We're tied at 33. Ballard, a former top 100 recruit on the ESPN 100, came into Florida as the 65th best player in his class. He's playing like it right now. He's being very aggressive. C.J. Walker leaves it short. Seminoles settling for threes last three times down the floor. Ballard finally forced to give it up. It's like a hot potato when it hits Ballard's hands. The season best is 14 points against Gardner Webb. Chioza spread leg, didn't get the whistle, then almost got stepped on. Scoop shot won't go, but a foul on the drive. What do we got? They got, got a block. blocking foul inside the restricted area. Tied at 33. Knowles will be at the line. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Gillette, the best a man can get.
All right, John, thanks. Here's a timeline of Leangelo Ball's uh, up and down season this far. They got to China November 5th, arrested with two teammates for shoplifting three days later. They uh, had to lean on a little bit of help to get them back quickly. And then December 4th, just today, announced that uh, they'll be leaving UCLA. LeVar Ball announced that. L let me ask you a question, Sean Farnham. How good is Leangelo Ball? Uh, he was maybe at the most a 10 minute per game player. Uh, he can shoot the ball from the outside. He's limited athletically. Uh, he, he's a good teammate and really strives to play hard. But I'm just talking from from an on court perspective. Obviously, not saying a good teammate by what he did in China. No, we're just talking on the floor. I'm just talking on the floor. At most, he's probably going to be a 10 minute per game player that would come off the bench and try to shoot a couple of threes and sit back down. So is Steve Alford going to miss no. having him in the program? No. And I, in my opinion, uh, based on how outlandish things have gotten um, that that I think it's best for Leangelo I think it's best for LeVar and I think it's best for UCLA basketball that they just part ways and go their separate separate directions at this point in time. So how attractive is he as a transfer. What level will well, he, he end up at? his dad's belief is that he's going to play pro next year. That's not what I asked. Well, Hudson. I don't think he's transferring to another college. Oh there you go. Hudson has a chance for a three point play. I think his dad's going to train him and I think his dad's going to try to get him to play professionally. Here's a nice drive of a player that's playing very well at the collegiate level right now Jalen Hudson. Jalen Hudson transferred from Virginia Tech. He was a 32 percent shooter from deep over two years with the Hokies. Reigning SEC player of the week. He is two and two against Florida State both of those. All of those uh, games and both of those wins coming as a Hokie, including in the ACC tournament DC a couple of years ago. To tie a bow on the the Lavar Ball thing since Please. you brought it up, it, the one thing I don't get is this comment today criticizing UCLA for how they handled this. <laughs> they they had multiple administrators with his son at all times in China. They served a suspension, an indefinite suspension, to go through the process in which it can't be anything but an indefinite suspension until the school. Conduct co people look at it and make sure and determine with the chancellor and the university president and the code of conduct how this relates to where he goes. So to say that he's unhappy with UCLA is saying that he's not thankful or appreciative to those that helped his son while he was doing pop up shops and signing autographs. The administrators that you're referring to that were with Langelo and the other UCLA players who were accused of shoplifting were with them after the shoplifting. Correct. Yes. And they also. stayed with them even after the team had left and gone back to campus. They stayed with those players. They didn't even attend the game that they all flew over to be part of in China. Second personal foul on Jalen Hudson. Now back to the game. And Brian Angola knocks down the first of two. Florida State with a two point lead. Lead. Chris Chioza returns to the floor for the Gators. Two minutes to go in this first half. Been very impressed with Florida State here for the first 18 minutes. I mean, Tom, this is a team that that has been able to put its thumbprint down on this game and dictate almost every aspect of it so far here in the first half. I know it's a three-point lead, but you look at Florida and how well they've played against great competition this year, in particular in those first 20 minutes. They have done an outstanding job. Chioza missed everything with his first three-point attempt of the night. And that was kind of one of those I think that he wanted to get a shot up. That was not a great look for Chioza. The length disrupted it. And just to be a little bit more patient for a guard that's been very patient all season long. Came in shooting 59% from deep. We got a jump ball. Possession arrow keeps it this way with Florida State. Florida has made just two of its last 12 attempts from deep. And remember, they hit just one of seven in the second half against Duke. That's their lone loss of the season. It's been a bit of a layoff since that Duke game as well. Well, a lot of games in a very short period of time. And I always think this, Tom, early in the season, what are these games used for? Well, they're used for resume building, right, for the NCAA tournament. But they're also used to expose your team. You want to be exposed a little bit. You want to find what your weaknesses are so you can really pinpoint them and start to work on them. You know who you sound like? 
You sound a little bit like Billy Donovan when you say that. Here's Walker with the drive. Sophomore somehow spins it in. C.J. Walker's got eight. You mean there's a potential that I could be a multinational <laughs> championship winning coach? What am I doing sitting next to you? I didn't say you were like him. Oh, sorry. Billy Donovan was always asked about the schedule that he played when he was here in Florida. He said, quote, it gets us to the truth. Yep. But that's what you want in games. I mean, and it's at every level. I mean, whether I'm coaching my son's seventh grade team, I tell the kids the same thing in the games. We get better at practice. You get exposed in the game. Mm -hmm. So when you get exposed, just realize that's fine. We just got to get back to the lab and start working on it again. And right now, you call, you call your practice gym the lab. I want to see you in a next practice. Why don't you go out this with those guys, wear a lab coat, have a beaker or two on hand. It's scientific, partner. Great man defense by Ballard. They find it inside. And Florida turning it up defensively in this possession. Shot clock is at six. Kofor off balance. That one will roll off. Chioza comes out of there with it. Full throttle ahead for Chris Chioza. No finish there. Got away with a shove. Seminoles the other way. Lob. Slam with one. Kofor with the jam. And a timeout on the floor well, when Allen never got up. What happened was their two bodies fell to the floor on the previous possession. So you had a lot of wet spots at this end of the floor. So even after the miss, you watch, everybody starts slipping and sliding around, distracts away from the great finish above the rim. Mike White uses a timeout here. It's an eight nothing Florida State run. We've seen a couple of those runs. It's seven nothing, eight nothing run. And every single time it seems as if the Gators are crawling back into this contest, Florida State pushes it up to another level, and then creates a little gap once again. They scored 10 of the game's first 11 points and getting off to a great start. Then they went one for their next 15 to allow the Gators to get back into this thing. Already 11 turnovers in this first half for Florida. That is very uncharacteristic. Second in the country, just nine turnovers a game. Well, that and the fact that they're getting pummeled on the offensive glass. 17 second chance points in the first half for Florida State. You mentioned the Seminoles runs. They've had runs of 10 to 1, 7 to nothing, and now 8 to nothing. 16 seconds left. Mike White wanted to work on end of the clock situations. Who would get the looks? What happy with their execution late in the game against Duke? Chance here to see how they close the half and who ends up with the ball in his hands. Substitution for Florida State. Mike White's going to pull Jalen Hudson over. Have extended conversation. See if we can get him a look. Kulichoff will pull the trigger. This is one of those moments Mike White said he's still trying to figure out on his team. How do they get the shot they want in certain situations? They're letting a lot of time run off here. They got to start going. Hudson offered the screen. He gets it right back. Challenge three is sidewinder. Too strong, and that'll end the half. It was MJ Walker closing out on the shooter. Terrence Mann, a man's man in this first half. He's got 11 on five of eight shooting. Time to get you to the studio. John Brickley, Dallin Cuff, and John Thompson the third to bring you all the latest news, scores, and highlights. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. Zach Tech Arena and Gainesville, Florida in a series that has been dominated as of late by Florida State. Welcome back, Tom Hart, alongside Sean Farnham. Seminoles have won three in a row. They've never won four in a row, but you look back at that first half, they look like that's possible. They're playing great basketball. There's a team that looks like they're ranked in the first half, and it, it wasn't the fifth-ranked Florida Gators. It was FSU. They controlled this game from the very start. How did they do it? At the defensive end of the floor, they contested. They made Florida attempt a lot of tough contested twos, and because of that, they had the opportunity to then get turnovers. They swarmed 11 turnovers forced to a team that only averages nine per game, and they turned them into points at the opposite end of the floor. The length of Florida State really disrupted Florida. So at the half, when you're sitting there going, okay, is this Florida playing bad? No, this isn't necessarily Florida playing bad. They're playing bad for a reason, and that's because Florida State has done exactly what it wants to do. 
That being said, Florida's been led by its backcourt all season, and in the first half, their starting backcourt, a combined two for 10 from deep. Overall, the Gators hitting just 25% of their threes. Chris Chioza held scoreless on 0 for 4 shooting. Quick three, Jalen Hudson leaves it short. And the loose ball fought for. It'll go to Florida State. It's a seven point lead for the Seminoles. Not the first possession that I think you'd want to see if you're a Gators fan. How about this? Multiple shot possessions in the first half. Florida State had 10 of them. Florida only had two. Florida has led just twice in this game. And the Seminoles turn it over. Well, Florida State, one of the things they did really well in the first half is they limited their turnovers. Only four turnovers in the first half. That's the fewest of any half this year for the Seminoles. Bilichov with a floater, and he gets a teardrop to go. Team high 11 for Igor Kulichov. Only one of those, uh, pardon me, only one of those buckets coming from behind the arc. Baseline drive, Kofor skips it. Shields got his hands on it, shot clock winding down. Terrence Mann gives it up. Angola beats the buzzer, but can't finish. And he gets it right back with the jam. Florida has struggled with the size of a player like Marvin Bagley. Pretty much everybody struggled with Bagley's size, though. But Florida State has a lot of length underneath, and thus far it's caused a lot of problems for the Gators. That's like Saints in the NBA, like, hey, man, they really struggle with Durant. <laughs> right. Uh, you really struggle with uh, LeBron James. But look at this. They're just out-muscling, out-wanting the ball, and that's pretty much been the statement of the game. Second chance points opportunities have been huge. 16 of Florida State's 44 points have come on second chances. Here's Brian Angola. Made his fourth consecutive start tonight. Well, was a great score coming out of North Idaho Junior College. Had five 30-point games. He kind of turned his game around in many ways. Last year in this Florida State team that won 12 games in conference, he was one of their best defenders. And offensively, he's starting to play with a little bit better control. Oh, that's just a mental lapse yeah. by Kayvon Allen. Florida team, it was only turning it over nine times a game, and they've already copped it up 12 times tonight. You think the layoff, the rust, the no. long trip, 2,900 miles on that charter aircraft took any toll on them? Did you say charter? I did. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not worried about that. Off balance, sit off the glass, and it goes for Terrence Mann. He's got a baker's dozen tonight. He's been fantastic. Tom, this isn't rust. This is just not executing the way that they need to. Uh, and they're playing a team right now in Florida State uh, that is crisp. Uh, they understand that this is a statement game for them. They feel a little disrespected by the fact that they're undefeated this season. You don't even see them anywhere in the top 25 nationally. And they know that this is the game that could put them in that topic and in that discussion. Well, after the loss to Duke the other night, speaking of Florida being rusty or maybe being tired, this is last week, Chris Chioza admitted that all of the overtimes they played, the late nights that they had out in Portland, maybe they didn't have their legs, and Mike White was having none of that excuse. Drive, Hudson, finish, and he's going to the line. His feet inside the halo. Watch the drive by Hudson as he goes down. Yes, it was the left heel. The right foot was on the outside. The left heel was over the line. Good call. But, you know, you're talking about guys that are 19, 20, 21 years old for the Florida Gators. If they can't get their legs back underneath them in a week, if they're still tired because of the charter air flight from Portland, back home to Gainesville, then, then there's a lot of things that need to be figured out for the Florida Gators. And, and I don't think Mike White would make that excuse. I certainly am not buying it. 
And this is a team that right now just hasn't answered the bell. They're they getting beat physically, mentally, and every step of the way execution-wise by Florida State. Seminoles cough it up, three on one. She owes a lob. There's a finish. Hudson above the rim. Seminoles the other way. Man off the glass. That is a huge basket by man. The crowd had finally gotten back into the game. Back to back buckets by Hudson. Finally in transition were the Gators. And now they have to slow it down and play against this length and the half court defense. Gators have made each of their last four field goal attempts. Allen spiked that one rejected by Obiagu. And because it landed on Kayvon Allen out of bounds, it'll be FSU ball. But this is what you've come to know all season long out of the Florida Gators. Get out in transition. Play above the rim. They like track meets. They've bettered the century mark four times already this season in the first six games. They lead the nation in scoring 99.5 a game. That's a travel. Extra step, and that'll give it back to the Gators. All right, so Mike White talked to us about it. We saw it at the end of the half. They're having trouble finding that guy to step up when they need a bucket in the half court. Who would you get the ball to here as Florida will be walking it up against Florida State pressure? Well, I look to get the ball right now to Hudson. He's the hot hand. He's the guy that has had the big games throughout the course of this season so far. Kayvon Allen has really kind of taken a slight step back. I'd like to play with Allen coming off of a screen. Hudson on the same side in which the screen comes from. Hudson hiding in the near corner. Left side of your screen. Chioza with the drive. Here's Allen. There's the drive. Oh my gosh, Allen's got to shoot that ball. Yep. Try to give it up to Hayes. Tommy's five feet away. Nobody's on him, and he passes it to a man with the back, his, his back to the basket, and a Seminole guarding him. Good hustle by Hayes, but the Gators couldn't get it. Rejected. Chioza able to find it, and he's able to draw the foul. Fiondu Cavangeli commits his third personal for Florida State. We've got a six-point game between these two rivals, Seminoles in front of the Gators. Tuesday on ESPN, we'll have the 23rd annual Jimmy V Classic from Madison Square Garden. Game number one, pits fourth-ranked Villanova, 12th-ranked Gonzaga at 7 Eastern. Then old Big East rivals square off as Syracuse takes on UConn, both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Let me take you back to December 18, 2001. Number one, Duke beat number seven, Kentucky, 95-92. Jay Will had a career-high 38 in that overtime win. Here's a look at the top ten. Florida checks in at number five. Villanova right in front of them. It's been a great run for Jay Wright's program. They're 8-0. Oh, you're thinking about the Gonzaga Bulldogs. All the success that they've had, Tom, they have not beaten a top five team since 2006 against North Carolina. By the way, it was at Madison Square Garden. Since then, they've lost eight straight games versus top five opponents. I would have lost that bar bet. Yeah. You win some, you lose some, Tom. That's what I heard. Chris Chioza and his Florida offense struggling. She owes a 0 for 4 from the floor. Good shot fake that time. See, the shot fake has been good. You, you elevate the defense up. You, as soon as their arms go up, you can get low and get by them and get into space. Kulichov did a nice job of that in the first half. Missed a couple of easy ones. I want to go back to that one instead of taking the contested three. C.J. Walker hits a contested three right over Keith Stone. Tom. Strength and weaknesses of the team, right? Florida State averaging just under 12 made threes per game. They have four made on the game. Florida State has four. That's all you need to know about this contest and why Florida State is still out in front. Nice look, Chioza. Hayes couldn't finish the flush, and he took it to the ground with him. Well, he was all alone, it looked like. Kulachov, short. Kofor has the board. Florida just simply off the mark. They're 0 for 3 from behind the arc here in the second half.
What do you got? It'll stay this way. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Florida started two of three from deep since then, just two of 16. Kulachov has made just one of his attempts. This is where the absence of John Bunu gets exemplified. And it's not that you're going to run a ton of sets trying to get John Bunu the ball, but there's a certain presence that he brings to the floor that is different. He's got size, he's got girth, he changes the defense. He can help open up some of your perimeter players setting monster screens up top. That's where John Bunu can really help. He's 6'11", 265. Talk with Mike White about Igbunu today. We asked him, how's that going to change who you are and what your team's identity, what your team's identity is? And uh, he said, really, we should be the same. We just defensive post presence has been lacking, and my guys know that, and I've challenged my guys. And a slip on the floor to travel by C.J. Walker, and he's saying, hey, let's get this cleaned up. There's been a lot of slippage out on the floor tonight. And there's Zigbunu along with Isaiah Stokes at the end of that Florida bench. Isaiah Stokes, I was there in Las Vegas when he decided he was going to break the backboard. By the way, Chase Johnson on the right side is ill tonight, so he's not available. Go ahead. But uh, Isaiah Stokes in the middle. AAU tournament over the summer in July, his final AAU season in Vegas, he cracked the backboard. One of these NBA style backboards. It wasn't it's not know, like high that, school gym. That driveway rattled, one right, that no. I tried to put together? No. No, that's not safe for your kids, Tom. <laughs> Kulichov was open. Well, he has been off the mark tonight. Came in hitting 49%. Florida's been off the mark. I mean, they just, this is, this is not even close to the same team that we saw up in Portland. C.J. Walker playing with some confidence. How about that? It's another triple. That was a size up and do you want to dance with me? A little couple jab steps. Elevate up over the top and knock it down. C.J. Walker has been playing some outstanding basketball. Coming off that career high game we mentioned in the first half against Rutgers. Continuing it up tonight. Largest lead of the night for Florida State. And Kayvon Allen fouled on the drive. Tom, watch this. You, you jab step off your defensive player. Get them dancing with you a little bit. As you jab, they have to react. As they react, if the hands start to drop ever so slightly, which they did, you elevate up over the top and finish. That foul was the third on Trent Forrest, so he will take a seat. DJ Savoy replaces him for Florida State. We've documented just how high scoring this Florida team can be and how good a three point shooting team they are, even though you may not be seeing that tonight. Can Florida shoot their way back into this game? Of course, the three point shot is the great equalizer. 10 points, 13. Plus minutes, Tom. This this is like five possessions if Florida gets it going. Defensively, they've led some, left something to be desired, especially in the second half. Florida State shooting better than 65% in the second half. Allen transition three. You know what I didn't like about that shot for Allen? His weight distribution was moving forward. Look out. Here's the lob. And man couldn't get his hands on it. Got players going down left and right. Allen, dish. Ballard has it roll off. Another point blank miss from the Gators. They're missing from deep. They're missing from up close. They are 0 for their last seven from the field. They have not had a field goal in over five minutes of action. Have the Florida Gators. Actually, with two attempts, they're 0 for the last eight. And they've missed their last 11 threes. Wild shot by man. The shot clock should have never reset. Yeah. Did not hit the rim. There'd be a shot clock violation and a Florida State turnover. Florida 
is searching for some offense. It's nowhere to be found tonight here in the Odo. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN from Gainesville, Florida. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham, our fantastic ESPN crew, and this has been a fantastic outing for Florida State tonight. And C.J. Walker is taking over point guard duties, and he is filling up the stat sheet. He's got 14 points. He's led the break, and he's knocked down some big shots. Well, to me, too, again, the 24 points he had against Rutgers, a lot of those came because he got to the free throw line 11 times. But when you have a game like that, your confidence starts stepping up. And the number one thing you need to have as a basketball player is confidence. If you don't have confidence in your ability to score the basketball or make positive plays for your team, there's no reason for you to be out on the floor. And C.J. Walker right now is playing with a great deal of confidence. Five of seven from the floor. He's hit three of five from deep. A couple of assists and just one turnover in 23 minutes against a very talented backcourt and going head-to-head -head with Chris Chioza, one of the fastest players in the game. I don't know if we've given C.J. Walker enough credit for the job he's done and the rest of his backcourt mates have done defensively on both Chioza and Allen. I think the job they've done as a team, which is the way you'd want it if you're Leonard Hamilton, you want this to be about your team. The strength and the positiveness of Florida State is the team. It's not the individual. It's not the lone part. And because of that, you look at the numbers. They, you're holding a Florida team to 18% shooting from three-point line. Florida on the year, 46% from three. You have controlled and demanded the tempo of this game from the tip. And it has been every single one of these guys wearing the black uniforms, closing out, contesting shots, turning them over. Gators' struggles continue. Walker gives it up on the break. Now set it up and start running your motion offense if you're Florida State here. Seminole shooting 50% in this half. That will increase on the deep three from M.J. Walker. The lead is now 13. Timeout Mike White in Florida. So, the defense is slipping and falling all over the floor, and so do the chances and opportunities for Florida to win this game. Seminoles could in control. Sean, the Heisman finalists were announced today. But uh, today, I should say, Baker Mayfield from Oklahoma, Bryce Love of Stanford, and the reigning winner, Lamar Jackson from Louisville. Who's your pick? I think Baker Mayfield in a landslide. Really? Yeah. I, I, I would vote for Bryce Love. The West he, Coast bias. He averages eight yards per carry. He played with a high ankle sprain for the last month plus of the season. And the way he's conducted himself is that worthy of a Heisman Trophy. He's also, by the way, pre-med and wants to be a pediatrician when he's done at Stanford. It's not a bad resume. I think everybody kind of forgot about Lamar Jackson. He's still putting up some incredible numbers. He'll by the be... way, where's Rashad Perry, by the way? Not there. I mean, San Diego State leads the nation in, in rushing. I mean, got to give some love. You disagree? No, I don't disagree. It's just... Tough if you're not on the radar to get that attention. There's only like 17,000 Heisman voters. Do you have a vote? No, but I should. You, should. you have a vote, right? Nope. <laughs> you should. <laughs> you actually cover the sport. <laughs> Kulichov with his third personal. By the way, um, when Chris Wanky won the Heisman for Florida State, I happened to be at baseball's winter meetings that year, and I was in a suite watching the ceremony with some Blue Jays officials. Of course, Wanky signed that big deal with Toronto and played in their minor league system before going back. I don't know if I've ever seen a room so upset that a guy won the Heisman. They were not exactly pulling for Chris Wanky to win it. Why? Some good tools. Just because just they, they wanted to play baseball and they. I mean, I didn't ask afraid. him personally. They didn't seem to be in the kind of mood where were you a happy guy for could him? point. Sure, I'm happy for anybody who realizes dream like that, especially with a second chance moving on to a different sport, right? 
or just being a two sports star like Charlie Ward. When the Heisman, then you go play for the Knicks? Who does that? It's amazing. You think about so many of the great athletes that you, you and I both get paid to go see and to watch these guys out on the floor compete and to watch teams grow and awaken to who they are and to their identity right in front of you. And I think Florida State has done that tonight. By the way, Dan Mullen has taken over this program, and you wonder in the very near future if he won't possibly tutor another Heisman winner like he did with Mr. Tebow. The quarterback whisperer. Got up the plane doing the Gator Chomp. Blocked from behind by Jalen Hudson. Chioza has it returned. MJ Walker with the block. You like the hire here. Oh, I love it. It was, it was the only choice. What about for Florida State? Obviously, the news of Jimbo Fisher departing, going to Texas A&M. There was a report today by ESPN that Willie Taggart, the Oregon head coach, was going to meet with the Seminoles. Off balance three and no whistle. That would be a home run hire, I think, for Florida State. There's nothing guaranteed, but they haven't had to go on a football coaching search in, what, 42 years. 12-point lead for Florida State. By the way, here's a trivia question of the night. The last coach who'd left Texas A&M for a better job. I mean, some, a lot of guys have been fired. Some guys had been, quote, unquote, retired. The last one really to leave on his own volition. How about the name of Bear Bryant? That is tough sledding. The expectations are high for a place that's only won one national championship. I came back in the 30s. Last 13 possessions for Florida, 0 for 12 from the floor, and three turnovers. The reverse doesn't go for Kulichov. Walker, nope, and a final tip is there from Kofer. There's nobody put a body on him. Ran right down the middle of the lane. Look, if you're even if you're small, you can still put a body on somebody, get into their legs, and force them to have to jump over your back to try to make a play. So worst performance of the season thus far for Florida, barring a crazy comeback in the last eight and a half, but worst performance to this point. If Florida is cold, should we expect more of this? Is this where they're going to struggle this year? Well, I, I think where they're cold in particular, Tom, is the fact that when they don't hit the three-point shot and they don't really know yet who's the guy that they want to get their offense going when they go through these scoring droughts. We saw it against Duke, and we're seeing it again tonight. It's been different guys stepping up, but you need to have that go-to guy. Ben, and that's the champion of the SEC. That's what we want to be and what we want to be and then eventually to the national championship and how we do it. Because if you can compete in this league, you can compete in any league in college football. Well, that's a rarity to win a national title and then choose to go somewhere else. It's Johnny Majors like territory. He left Pitt to go to Tennessee. Here are your college football news and notes. Willie Taggart will interview with Florida State. Ed Ashoff of ESPN reporting that. Herm Edwards was named the new head coach out in Tempe. He hadn't coached in college football since he was with San Jose State in 1989. And after interesting overtures from his home state, Gus Malzahn spurns Arkansas. He'll re-sign with Auburn. The tune of seven years and 49 million. The Gus Bus can afford some new upholstery for sure. College football playoff is set. Number one seed is Clemson. Dabble's got him rolling. They'll take on his former team, Alabama, where he played. And on the other side, Oklahoma and Georgia out in the Sugar Bowl. First ever meeting between the Sooners and Dogs. Who do you like there? I like Georgia on the right side. Very physical. What about Great the running game? To, you got to wait and see how the health is of, of Alabama at the defensive side. Alabama's linebackers all should be back. The okay. question is if the layoff has them rusty. Okay. You're big into the layoff rust thing. You talked about it with Florida. <laughs> now you're talking about with Alabama. I know this is your first game. Do you have some layoff rust yeah. in college basketball, Tom? What well, looks out looks in. <laughs> Might be projecting just a little I'm bit. Rusty. Look, you've called a very nice game so far. You've got eight more minutes, kid. You can get it done, I promise. These games move faster than football. <laughs> Another offensive putback for Florida State. 19 offensive rebounds now for the Florida Se uh, Florida State Seminoles and 20 second chance points. They've held Florida to 49. You know, all the talk about new coaches. I'm excited for my alma mater. They got Chip Kelly.
And you talk about a home run hire by Dan Guerrero. You think he can win immediately? Yes, because I think he'll recruit immediately. Tennessee have a coach yet? Uh, last time I checked, no. Rick Flair said he would take the job, though. <laughs> I, I did see that. <laughs> so at least there's one. <laughs> if Flair took the job, though, <laughs> none of the players could do Flairisms in the locker room. Right? Well, I think he'd let him. Shot clock winding down. Florida State wasn't aware initially. And they're able to glance it off the rim and then save it. It hit the rim, didn't it? I thought it did as well, and I think Pat Adams does as well, which is why they're going to talk about it. And by the way, I'm going to take you back to the end of that first possession. C.J. Walker is not in the game right now. The Florida State's point guard was quick to holler out to Trent Forrest and point out the shot clock to him. That's what allowed Florida State to get the shot off. When Hayes slow getting up off the floor and if you're Florida that's the last thing you want to see is one of your tallest players hobble off the floor. Yeah I think that that hit the rim it changed direction looks like the spin of the ball changed direction. So as you look at that shot again you can also see Kivarius Hayes go down. And he's going right back to the locker room. It's not a good sign. Remember, they're already without John Igbunu, 6'11", fifth-year senior. Watch Hayes, number 13. You see that ankle just turn on him as he went to step. It was his right ankle. And he comes straight at you. Look at, watch that the right ankle just buckled underneath him as he fell to the floor. And I think that, I think that gazed the rim. It did. I, Easy to see live and then another look at it here. Watch the rotation of the ball. See it's going backwards and then boom the rotation starts to move in an another direction. That's a great way of looking at it. It's just watching the rotation of the ball. A couple days Loyola Chicago comes to town and then Florida takes on Cincinnati. It's a 12 point lead for Florida State. It right. was not a shot clock violation. No. But so Doug Sermons cleared it up for you. Right. And what he said was look the ball hit the rim. There was no possession of the ball when the whistle was blown. So therefore they will go to the jump ball. The jump ball will award the ball to Florida State. You know what I like in college football is you can have a play ruled dead by an inadvertent whistle where a fumble recur occurs and they can rule it a clear and immediate recovery. That was a Clear and immediate recovery by Florida State. I know it was whistled, but it ended up right back in their hands. You, you want to change rules. Your first game back from football, <laughs> and now we want to change rules. Well, I got JD Collins' number right here. You can call the national I've coordinator. I've got some officials. suggestions for you guys. All right, good. Thank you, Tom. It's the airing of grievances I think, almost. I think the three of them just did a great job administering the rules. You don't waste an opportunity, do you? An opportunity for what? <laughs> Good post position feed him. And it's a foul reach down grab by stone from behind but it, what I love right there is you got a big with two feet deep in the paint. If you've got a big where you can see both palms of his hands and both of his feet are in the paint you must pass him the ball. Keith Stone, the 6'8 sophomore, probably more like a, a true four, but forced to play some five and to see some action defensively at the center position. Hayes, remember, was taken off to the locker room with an ankle injury. What are they looking at here? Oh my gosh, you see who just walked in the building? Grumpy Sean Farnham has reappeared. No, I'm not. They, look, they're just they're fine. Pat Adams doing a great job. Veteran official, multiple Final Fours. I'm happy. I'm working with you. <laughs> he started. He started to walk in, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you the saw door him go was to cracked, <laughs> and I thought there was something interesting on the TV monitor. I wanted to come in and kind of check it out, but then I decided, nah, I'll let you just be. Maybe they're watching Monday Night Football over there. Here's Walker. Well, he has been a revelation tonight for Florida State. 
for Terrence Mann. 19 points to lead all scores and a chance for a three-point play. Even when there's a good play and you think, okay, good, the Gators got a turnover, they're going to go out and transition. It's the hustle of Florida State. It's the effort of the Seminoles. And it has been that way all night long. Every second that the Gators have got it close, the Seminoles pulled back away. If the Gators make a good play, the Seminoles have the answer times two. Man was raised in Queens, but born in Brooklyn. He's been doing it, doing it, doing it well. The lead is now 15. He's over 20 in three of his last five games. The largest lead of the game. Allen able to draw the foul from C.J. Walker. It's the third on Walker. And Walker left his feet. He knew he got caught in the air. Put his hands literally behind his back as that shot attempt came up. Watch him reach behind. Oops, I know I'm not supposed to be here. And it's just a smart play by Kayvon Allen to try to manufacture some points right now for Florida. Kayvon Allen preseason first team all SEC selection. How important is it for Florida to get this guy going? I, I think it's immensely important. I think he's their best shot maker in particular coming off of on ball screen situations. I know it hasn't looked that way tonight. His numbers have not been good. Uh, but the emergence of other scorers around him have pushed Kayvon Allen back a little bit. I think he needs to start to become a little bit more assertive in contests like this. And the huge game against Wisconsin in the NCAA tournament. The lead eight team last year for Florida. Exact Tech Arena, Gainesville, Florida. Tom Hart alongside Sean Farnham. Five and one Florida, the fifth ranked team in the country. Has been playing from behind just about all night against undefeated and six and oh Florida State. Man, one hand. Hey! Rolls home for Terrence Mann. How about the performance out of Mann tonight? You think about guard play and elite level ability to score and finish. He is a driver, not a shooter. The scouting report will tell you as such, but still Florida has not figured out a way to keep him from getting to his area on the floor where he wants to get to to be successful. Tom, he is 10 of 15 shooting from the floor and just got his own rebound off of his own missed. Only returning starter from a Florida State team. They won 26 games last year. They did the second round of the tournament. For qualifying guards, he has the best shooting percentage in the country. 67% coming into tonight's contest. Allen whistled for the foul. And where is he at right now? 10 of 15. If you break it down by a fraction sense, Tom, that would be two thirds. <laughs> two thirds is 67%. And this has been your math moment. <laughs> Here's Trent Forrest at the free throw line. A lot of musicians on this Florida State team. Did you know that? Read Chuck's notes. Best SID in the country. He's amazing. I mean, literally, Forrest played the violins, drums, drums saxophones. Yeah. They got everything. They could have their own musical band. Well, it makes sense. What other kind of band would you have? It makes sense given that their head coach has his own record label, right? You have a headband. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Trent Forrest played his drums in the church where his mom is the pastor. Rubber band. Let me keep going. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's after 11 on the East Coast. <laughs> Force has seven, the lead is 17 now for Florida State. I thought we'd have a great game tonight. I thought these teams would be evenly matched. I did not see Florida State pulling away like this on the Gators' home court. This is impressive, and if you were looking to make a statement, Florida State, you have done it here tonight. You think we're talking to Leonard Hamilton today about the teams that have moved into the rankings, a lot of teams we don't know much about. And he was peppering you with questions. What has this team done? Who has this team played? TCU was one that was top of mind. Do you think that bothered him? Or do you think that was just a conversation? I just think started? it was just conversation. I, I think that he doesn't really care. At this point in time in his career, he doesn't care where he's ranked right now. He just wants to know where he's going to finish. And, and that's what he's focused on right now. The process of getting this team to become whole, to become the, the fierce defensive team that it's known it can be. 
and the pieces that make up the ability to be that great defensive team that's going to allow them to find success in the ACC. And I think that's what's so appealing for Leonard Hamilton is he knows that they have yet to hit their stride. The learning curve is going to be really steep for this team. They're young. They're starting to play well together. They've got great chemistry. And they're going to have to hurry, though, because they start ACC play very similar to how they started ACC play last year. Remember last year, they went five and one to start conference play against six ranked teams. Yep. And this year it's going to be much of the same. You look at Duke, Carolina, and Miami, all of those currently ranked inside the top 11. Obviously, Duke being number one. Then you've got Louisville and Syracuse. Louisville lost at home yesterday. Walker knocks the second one down. How good can Louisville be this year? I think they can be good. Obviously, there's been a lot of distractions. You know, you talk about all this distraction stuff with the FBI. And, and some people have said, you know, that's maybe why Arizona's struggling a little bit right now is because of off the court issues. Louisville obviously went through the biggest, losing Rick Patino as your head coach and then trying to come back together again. But the pieces and the talent are there for them to be certainly a, a team to be reckoned with in the ACC and a top half finisher in what is still the best conference in the country in basketball. I think the SEC has made a huge push this season tonight you may not know it given the score on your screen but overall the SEC has taken a massive step forward and see that's what Kayvon Allen needs to do a lot more of Tom by the way I, I would could make an argument that I know they lost their Hall of Fame head coach but that Auburn has been just as distracted by that investigation as anybody and they're quietly six and one on the season great finish by Terrence Mann He's got 24. Somebody should tell Florida that Terrence Mann wants to get to the rim. He's been doing it all night. Great week of college basketball, and looks like it's going to start with an upset. The fifth ranked team in the country trailing Florida State 73 to 58. Sports Center tonight after a Monday night football. Post game from the Steelers and the Bengals and right now Cincinnati with a 20 to 10 lead. Also take a look at the Supreme Court sports betting case it could change the laws in your state. It takes bad beats another level by the way. And how the 20 and 4 Boston Celtics faring against the visiting Bucks and the Greek Freak. It's all on SportsCenter as always streaming live on the ESPN app. Also Boogie Cousins and Kevin Durant ejected tonight. Did I see a headbutt from Boogie? He might have, but certainly you saw a lot of verbal jarring between the two. Very high 25 for Terrence Mann, and a foul out front will put Chioza at the free throw line in the bonus. Trent Forrest with his fourth personal foul. So I'm thinking about this. In the ACC, there's four teams that are unbeaten. Duke, Virginia, Miami. The fourth team is Florida State. The first three are all nationally ranked. Florida State is the only one that is not. That's about to change. Mm -hmm. That's a first point for Chris Chioza. It comes at the 353 mark with his team down 74 59, averaging 13 a game. And he missed a second. He was 0 for 5 from deep last year against Florida. He is 0 for 1 from deep tonight. And Chris Chioza, they would, Chris Chioza is the kind of guy that plays a very emotional game. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. Yep. This is one that's going to sting. But you, you think about how he plays and how he's motivated. You wonder if that's something that might help him out down the road. He'll be the only Florida player to lose four games to yes. Florida State. And he's as Ever. We, as, and as we mentioned too, he's had a great start to his season. And this is going to be one where this whole entire, not just Chris Chioza, but certainly the, the leader and every spark plug to the offense and, and certainly the initiator of the defense, he's going to take this one on his shoulders. And he's going to have to bring the rest of his teammates and get them back to the way they were playing prior to the last five minutes really against Duke and then this entire game. So uh, Florida at number five in the country at five and one. Certainly not playing like a top ten team tonight. 
surely they're somewhere in the middle there, right? I mean, Hudson hit, hits well, his Well, I'm not a big point. overreactor to games like this. Okay. Not this early. You know, I mean, we all want to say, oh, they're final four good. They're final four good. We don't know what they're going to look like in March. You don't know the, you know, whether there's injuries, whether a team really starts to come to come together and play with the chemistry that you want to see. Take it for what it's worth right now. Again, games are to be exposed. The Gators got exposed tonight against pressure defense with length. When they're not hitting shots, they really struggle. There's no answer that they have right now at being able to protect their offensive glass. Can I point one thing out about Florida this year or versus last year? They turned into an Elite 18 last year, right? Yep. But they lost to Vanderbilt. January 21st, Mike White had a team meeting, and he said they recommitted to each other after that meeting. And then they were able to turn their season around and get back on the right track. Every team's going to have ebbs and flows and ups and downs, right? right? I mean, Duke is being led by a super freshman, Marvin Bagley. What happens if Bagley starts to struggle or hits a wall? Duke might just struggle, too. Yeah, I don't know if I'm seeing that one, but yes, yeah, I followed everything else. I mean, Marvin Bagley is just at a completely different level. Angola challenge three, ripped down by Kulichov. Think about this, 23 offensive rebounds tonight for Florida State. 23. And what did you ask Leonard Hamilton about today when it came to offensive rebounds? If he was concerned about it, because they had been out-rebounded at the offensive end by their opponents in five out of their six games. I mean, that was not a strength in the first couple of games that they had. They gave up an average of 14 offensive rebounds per game. They give up 18 second chance points to Rutgers. Nice finish by Forrest with the shot clock winding down. And remember, they're still without Chris Kumaji. There's 7 4 center who's a difference maker inside on both ends of the floor and a shot blocking machine, which is what Leonard Hamilton is used to having year after year after year with a presence inside, allows him to overplay in the perimeter, to go for steals. They don't have that threat well the amazing, inside without them. the amazing thing about Florida State is you know a lot of teams like Florida and a lot of other teams in college basketball they cannot withstand a loss to a player with size because there's just not a lot of size however that is not an issue for Florida State Florida State has nothing but length all over the floor who does he love is it Valentine's Day or is it Christmas season who does he point out the love to I think to you, Tom, you brought him up again on national television. Yeah, I got you. Back at you. 23 offensive rebounds of their 43 missed shots. It's a stress fracture on his right foot. And the timetable for his return is still very much uncertain. Leonard Hamilton, in only way that Leonard Hamilton could, compared it to baking a cake today. He said, what's the timetable for him coming back? He said, well, it's like baking a cake. No matter how hungry you are or how bad you want to eat the cake at that moment, you can't take it out of the oven before it's finished. So what does that mean? <laughs> January? February? When's the cake going to be done? I don't know. I don't know if it's an easy bake oven <laughs> like my daughter has or, you know. It's going to take more than the power of a 40-watt light bulb to get Kamaji back okay, on the floor. I just want to make sure. But it is National Cookie Day, though. What's your favorite cookie? I don't know, but I just crushed like 16 Oreos back there. So you're going to go with that as your favorite? My favorite tonight. <laughs> I'm a chocolate chip guy. What a job, by the way, C.J. Walker has done tonight. Him and Terrence Mann have been fantastic for this Florida State team that's looking to go to 7-0 and on the year. Take a look at Florida State's upcoming schedule and what they have ahead. And winnable games heading into conference play and then that tough stretch to start. Angola gets his second triple. You're talking about the non-conference strength of schedule for Florida State might be something that comes up on Selection Sunday. But if you breeze through undefeated before you get to one of the toughest leagues in the country. No the strength of schedule should take care of itself strength in conference play. ACC, you don't have to really worry about strength of schedule all that much. I mean, if you win your games and you take care of business, you don't lose any of the games you're not supposed to, you're going to be fine. 
Another three off the back rim. And when you have a signature win like this, and a true road game, and I love true road games in the non-conference, a true road game, a rivalry game against a top five opponent, and you go on their floor and get the victory in dominating fashion. That's what the Seminoles did tonight. They'll get back on their bus. They'll get back to Tallahassee. They'll be undefeated and looking to finish out this week with a spike of the ball in the middle of the Gator by C.J. Walker. It's almost like a flag plant. Leonard Hamilton's team is 7-0 on the season. Our final score, 83-66, Florida State over Florida. For Sean Farnham, I'm Tom Hart. Thanks for watching College Basketball Live next.